Welcome all of you, the viewers of Poland Daily Culture. My name is Maria Konjelska and today we'll talk about a movie, The Hong Konger. With us on the phone is Eric Cohn calling us from the US, uh, the producer of the movie. Eric, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Well, uh, it is actually a very interesting movie, a documentary movie uh, about uh, the, the Hong Konger, uh, which is uh, your main character. Uh, could you tell us, uh, first of all, uh, how, like, why did you choose this topic and um, uh, why also you wanted to do this movie right, right now? Absolutely. So Jimmy Lai, who is the subject of the film, who is a uh, he's a billionaire, he's a newspaper publisher, pro-democracy activist in Hong Kong. Uh, it's a story that's very close to our heart at the Acton Institute, which is where I work and the, uh, the organization that made this film. He's been a longtime friend of the Acton Institute. He's very close friends with our co-founders, Chris Maurin and Father Robert Sirico, Father Sirico, who appears in the film. It's a story that we thought was important to tell because the people of Hong Kong have been losing their freedom over the course of, uh, well, about 30 years now since the handover of Hong Kong, 25 years, uh, the handover from uh, Great Britain to China of Hong Kong. And I think Jimmy best exemplifies this story. Here's somebody who published one of the most popular newspapers in Hong Kong, one that was in favor of democracy, that was in favor of human rights. Uh, the paper has since been shut down and using the very draconian national security law, Jimmy is currently in prison awaiting trial uh, for really nothing more than expressing his ideas, uh, speaking freely, the concepts of freedom of speech that we enjoy in the United States and many other countries. It's uh, an incredibly important story and one that we thought that we needed to draw more attention to so more people know what is happening in Hong Kong right now. Talking about this, uh, well, let's try to uh, to tell the story of Jimmy in sort of a nutshell, but uh, knowing the fact that he actually came from the mainland China as a kid to the Hong Kong, uh, living through this sort of huge uh, gap between these two worlds, which was in those times especially huge, but which is still uh, right now, because after all, uh, uh, when you cross uh, when you cross from well, let's mainland China, Shenzhen to Hong Kong, then um, well suddenly suddenly your internet starts to work, for example, <laughs> which is. Uh, which is a huge uh, change, especially for a foreigner. But um, yes. uh, talking about uh, Jimmy, so tell us, uh, tell us his story. Very briefly, so he, um, when he is about 11 or 12 years old, he comes to Hong Kong, uh, starts working in a factory there, um, starts making some money, starts, you know, his entrepreneurship streak really uh, takes over. He builds a clothing company called Giordano, uh, which is a huge success. It's popular even in mainland China. And then he, uh, when he witnesses what happens in 1989 with the Tiananmen Square massacre, he really realizes what is at stake, not just for people in Hong Kong, but certainly for the people in mainland China. And he wanted to draw attention to the truth about what happened at Tiananmen Square. So he starts Next Media, which publishes Next Magazine, and then Apple Daily, which is the newspaper that he published. For speaking the truth about what happened at Tiananmen Square, the Chinese threatened to shut down his business in China uh, if he was still a part of it. So he actually had to abandon Giordano uh, and moved on to focusing on newspaper publishing. Um, over the course of uh, the years since the 1997 handover of Hong Kong from the British back to the Chinese, we, he starts to notice the erosion of freedom and human rights that is taking place under Beijing's rule. Uh, and he writes and draws attention to these things in his newspaper. As a result, uh, he becomes a major fixture of the protest campaigns that happened in Hong Kong over the last uh, 10 years or so, a lot of them relating to efforts by Beijing to crack down on the freedoms that Hong Kongers enjoy. Uh, first, the extradition law, which uh, would have sent people charged with crimes in Hong Kong into mainland China for either trial or imprisonment. Uh, that never becomes law, but the protests that grew out of that, the reaction to it from Beijing is the current national security law, uh, which is what they've used to persecute not just Jimmy, but plenty of other people for speaking their mind, for saying the truth, and for protesting for human rights and the freedoms that Hong Kongers have traditionally enjoyed. 
and you're trying to underline and say all of those things in the movie uh, with this oh, also beautiful pictures uh, of showing how the, the, the city developed uh, through last 30 years or something like this, uh, which makes a, a, a huge a huge impression on, I would say, every viewer. So uh, we put a point here and uh, we continue this discussion in the next episode. But again, thank you very much for being with us and thank you very much for showing and t telling about this movie and this topic. And to all of you, the viewers of Poland Daily, uh, this movie, The Hong Konger, is, uh, you can watch it free uh, on YouTube. Uh, and uh, just, well, we encourage you to do it and write down under this video the comment what you think about it. Thank you for watching our show.